Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well today. So in today's video, I'll be covering a um, skill tree setup kind of demo to show you guys how to build some skill tree stuff in your games. It should be pretty straightforward, nothing too hard, I'm hoping. Um, just before I get into it, big thank you to everyone. You guys are all amazing. I have no clue. I can't believe the channel's got as many subscribers as it has. So let's get into it. This video tutorial should be pretty straightforward. Let me just load it and I'll show you. So this is the skill tree. So you can see I've got four points to spend and I've only done two different skills, which is health and shields or more armor. If I click on the lower ones here, you can see I can't actually do anything. If I click on either of these, so if I click on the heart, changes green, unlocks the next layer. As you can see, I can unlock shields, and once I'm out of points, I can't spend any more. How does this work? Very mm, surprisingly simple, if I was to assess the complexity of other things I've done. So what it does, in the first instance, I do the really dumb thing, and I just generate quite literally all the objects. So once I've done that, all I'm doing is setting the depth one deeper on the skill tree management. And then from there, I have my global XP um, points to spend. So if I change that to two, for example, it'll drop it down to two. I track my health, I track my shield, I track my player health and my player shield. So the idea is I need to pass the values over so I can keep track of whatever's going on in here, which then affects my player character. As a note, if I was to make this to be enabled and disabled, if you guys want to see that, let me know. Um, is I'll just literally track these values in here and then use a disable and enable function to then enable and disable it whenever I need it. But in essence, that's all it's really doing here. These globals, to be truthful, should live in another object, not this object, um, but that should be fairly obvious. The draw function is pretty straightforward. What I do is I generate a couple of temp values to make some draw colors. I draw a rectangle, I set some new draw colors for the outside, draw another rectangle, I then use another draw color to set the text color. Nothing too complicated there, which generates, so that there generates this background here without these objects. And as you can see, points are accurate. Okay, now, how do I get this effect here to go? So. You'll see here that my hearts are greyed out, my shields are greyed out. If I click on one, it changes to green, and then the grey out turns off. What it does is it actually reads these two values and looks at where they're sitting in the amount of points that are allocated to them. So if I go to health, for example, my first step of health, so you can see there's no create function in this, it's just got two, two things it's doing. One, it's drawing itself, and two, it's listening effectively for a click. So you guys have seen this code a million times. This is me just creating a click function. The next step is in here, I look at the global for my skill of health, if it's equal to zero, and global XP is greater than or zero, or greater than zero, I will allocate one point to my health skill. Um, and then I'll also allocate one to the player health, so I've got track of both, and then I will take one XP point. This here, this particular value of um, skill health, triggers the change in the object. So if I go to the draw here, if my global skill or health is greater than or equal to one, I will draw my sprite, and I'll use index one. So if I go to my sprite here, index one is this green square, and I'm drawing it with an opacity attached. Now, I know there's other ways to do it, I was just being lazy. Okay, so that's how the first one works. So both the first point for the shield and the health bar, oh sorry, health hearts, are the same. The next ones are a little bit more in depth because I have to deal with two factors attached to it. So if I reload it, you'll see I've got grey, um, clear, and then green. 
So I need to deal with an extra factor attached. So if I go to my health plus icon, you'll see here it's the same thing again. The thing that changes is this value. So now because we're in the status of one for health, it ticks over and now I look for only one. This means as well, I can't click on something and spend points on something that's not active. So it forces a sequence to occur, same principle. But now what changes is here, this is the grade section. So this looks at if it's grayed out. So it's saying that if my skill value of health is less than one, it will draw a gray outline. And if it's greater than or equal to two, it will draw a green one to indicate that I already have it. So if I go to my health plus, you'll see one, two, three sprites. So zero, one, two. And then the shield operates in the same way. So if I go to shield two, it will be the same, same idea. It just changes over. Nothing's really changed. And then in shield three, it's um, quite literally a progression. So you can see now it's two of that sequence. And then it's two and three. So that's a simple skill tree like menu drawing system. If you guys would like me to expand that a little bit further, let me know. Because this was just a quick, easy one that I thought you guys might like to kind of show how you can destroy, uh, sorry, de generate uh, skill trees. Like, and it's not hard. It's pretty straightforward. So if you guys enjoyed that, let me know. You guys are amazing. Source code will be up in the Google Drive as always. And I will talk to you guys next time. See you later.